The microcapillary protein crystallization system, or MPCS, is a microfluidic technology for crystallizing proteins. The development of the MPCS has been supported in part by the Protein Structure Initiative. Let's start with an overview of the advantages of using the MPCS technology that we will discuss in this presentation. First, it's a low volume microfluidic technology. It only uses 5 to 10 nanoliters of protein per experiment. Despite the small volume, the crystals that grow using the MPCS are what we call diffraction ready, which means two things. First, translation to a different crystallization method is not necessary, and second, scale up to a larger experimental volume is also not necessary. The MPCS crystals shown on this slide range from 50 to 200 micrometers on a side, or in other words, large enough for subsequent diffraction experiments. Other advantages that we will discuss in this presentation include the capability for in situ diffraction, a lack of dead volume so that every nanoliter of protein gets used, and on chip formulation of fine gradients for crystal optimization. So, how does the MPCS actually work? Well, the MPCS technology consists of three basic components. The first is a sophisticated syringe based pumping system that provides smooth and accurate flow of all the fluids used in the experiment. There are four independently controlled pumps that are used to control flow of one carrier fluid stream and three aqueous streams, these typically being protein, precipitant, and some dilution buffer. The carrier fluid is an inert, immiscible fluid that preferentially wets the wall of the microcapillary and carries the aqueous solutions through the microchannel. The crystal card contains the other two basic components of the MPCS technology. The 3 plus 1 mixer is the junction point on the crystal card where the four fluid extremes come together. When the streams have been pushed up to the 3 plus 1 mixer, as shown in the picture on this slide, the crystal card is said to be primed and the crystallization trial can begin. Upon starting the flow in a primed crystal card, 20 nanoliter sized aqueous droplets, which we call plugs, begin to form in the microcapillary. Plug composition is controlled by controlling the flow rates of the fluids entering the crystal card. The plugs continue to form until the third basic component of the MPCS, the storage capillary, is completely filled. Here we see a primed and ready crystal card. The flow begins and we see the first aqueous plug spontaneously forming at the 3 plus 1 mixer. Now importantly here, the carrier fluid is wetting the wall of the microcapillary, such that there's always a thin layer of carrier fluid separating the aqueous solution from the wall of the microcapillary. The significance of this thin layer is that it prevents crosstalk between the plugs, making each plug a separate and distinct crystallization experiment. Throughout the experiment, the flow rates of the precipitin and the buffer streams are slowly changing so that a concentration gradient is being generated over a series of plugs. Now, By now, you can see that a greater percentage of each plug is made up of the clear buffer stream coming from the right. Part of the power of the MPCS technology rests in this ability to perform on-chip formulation of fine gradients, which makes the MPCS very well suited for crystal optimization. After the plugs are finished forming, we're left with this large array of plugs that are ready to be incubated for crystal growth. Up to 800 separate experiments will fit in a single crystal card. And here we show time-lapse crystal growth of the crystals in the MPCS. As we discussed at the beginning of this presentation, crystals grown with the MPCS are diffraction ready, or large enough for diffraction experiments and easily extractable from the peel apart crystal card. Simply cut the thin sealing layer near the desired crystal and peel back the plastic. This will open up the microcapillary for extraction of the crystals with a cryo loop. Alternatively, a drop of cryoprotectant can be placed on top of the exposed crystals and the crystals can simply be pulled out of a more traditionally sized drop. If desired, this drop can even be transferred by pipette to a traditional crystallization plate for crystal harvesting. On-chip formulation with the MPCS prevents you from pipetting hundreds of times just in order to perform a fine gradient screen. Shown at the top of this slide is a schematic and picture of a pH gradient formed by using one aqueous inlet for high pH buffer and another aqueous inlet for a low pH buffer. pH indicator coming from the third aqueous inlet illustrates the pH change over a short series of plugs. Of course, the real power of this technique lies in the ability to carefully interrogate a critical region of crystallization space surrounding an initial crystal hit. The generic crystallization phase diagram shown at the bottom of this slide illustrates the goal of a fine gradient experiment.
After locating an initial hit, you know that the cocktail must have been very near the area where crystal nucleation takes place. An optimization gradient with the MPCS efficiently scans the phase space surrounding that nucleation spot, providing you with the true phase map of that region of phase space. This phase space is illustrated in the cartoon series of plugs beneath the diagram, as well as in this real-world example. In this case, the transition from precipitation to microcrystals to crystal clusters to single crystals is resolved by slowly scanning the precipitant concentration. Another important observation from this is that with the MPCS, when you get crystals, you often get many crystals because of the slow, smooth concentration changes. In this trial, 50 plus plugs yielded single crystals. This particular protein was a member of the SSGCID, the Seattle Structural Genomic Center for Infectious Disease pipeline, and it's a good example of how the MPCS technology is routinely used in-house at Emerald Biosystems and our sister company Decode Biostructures by carefully optimizing initial crystal hits. And here are even more examples of crystals recently obtained from the MPCS for the SSGCID grant. Two have recently led to novel structures. Remember that the crystals in these pictures are the very ones used for diffraction studies due to our ability to extract the crystals directly from the crystal cards. Using the MPCS to perform crystal optimization can significantly streamline the crystallization pipeline by preventing unnecessary production of excess protein. We will typically use the leftover few microliters of protein from the initial screen to perform the optimization trial. But optimization screening is not the only thing the MPCS can do. It's also capable of sparse matrix, or initial screening. The MPCS incorporates gradients into its sparse matrix screening in a technique called the hybrid method. By combining sparse matrix and gradient screening in one trial, large areas of crystallization phase space are able to be covered. The key to the hybrid method is the preformed cartridge of precipitants that's used as one of the aqueous streams. The precipitants in this array are separated by small gas bubbles and are combined with two other aqueous streams. By controlling the flow rates of each stream, a concentration gradient of each precipitant over a series of plugs forms, efficiently spanning crystallization phase space. A single crystal card can hold up to 24 different precipitants, and a gradient of 96 different precipitants can be screened using only about 22 microliters of protein. And remember, because any crystals that grow are diffraction ready, the hybrid method is capable of producing your initial screen, your optimization screen, and diffraction data producing crystals all at the same time. Diffraction ready crystals from the MPCS can be pulled out, as we've already seen, or analyzed in situ. The entire crystal card is simply mounted on the goniometer head of a beamline, and the crystals are hit with the X-rays. The diffracted X-rays travel only through the 100 micrometer thick ceiling layer on the back side of the crystal card. Full data sets of diffraction data can be collected at room temperature while the crystals remain in the crystal card. The electron density map shown here is a 1.9 angstrom resolution map generated by combining data from three separate crystals that were never removed from a crystal card. However, in situ diffraction may be at its most beneficial when used as a screening technique. In situ determination of whether undisturbed crystals will diffract well or poorly can potentially save lots of time, energy, and money spent optimizing cryocooling conditions. Now in order to provide an opportunity to test out the MPCS technology, we have established the MPCS user facility at our Woodridge, Illinois location. At the user facility, users can bring their own protein samples and try running crystallization screens with the MPCS for themselves, both with the instrumentation and the crystal cards. It's conveniently located about five miles from the APS synchrotron at Argonne National Labs, which makes it an easy place to stop by on a trip to Chicago or to an APS beamline. The instrument shown on this slide is the MPCS beta instrument, which is the prototype instrument we've been using for more than a year. Now we are excited to introduce the MPCS plug maker, which is a user-friendly and automated new instrument for setting up crystallization experiments in the MPCS crystal cards. The plug maker brings with it all the advantages of the MPCS beta, plus it has a user-friendly touchscreen interface, a small laboratory footprint, and most importantly, automated setup of sparse matrix and gradient crystallization screens. In appreciation of the generous support of this project by the Protein Structure Initiative, we're introducing the plug maker at a discount of 30% off the retail price. This also includes 30% off the purchase of the first 200 crystal cards with no minimum purchase. 
Well, thanks for checking out this e-presentation about the MPCS. For more information, please visit our website at emeraldbiosystems.com and click on MPCS.